My name's Patty Boy. I've been playing uh, Yamaha keyboards, PSRs, pretty much only, um, for about 30 years. Seriously, I love Yamaha. I love Yamaha. I love the sound, I love the action, I love the performances. I love their technology. It's awesome, right? It is. It's a beautiful sounding machine. And I love technology. Not the brightest bulb in the box, but uh, I dig it. You know, it's trekky and all. I even got Spockies. Anyway, I uh, made a little upgrade in life and uh, decided to buy a Mox 8. Yeah. I jumped from PSR, which does everything for you, pretty much. You've got all the band in the world, and you just perform and layer. But this one, I didn't have a clue. I just bought it. And I said, hey, grow a pair, right? So I've had it for a month. Don't know a damn thing about it. i got to tell you, scary, yes, how to record. How to read the damn manual, the print is so small. So, don't feel bad, all right? You're not alone. I said, when I conquered this machine, I would post a video to help other newcomers learn what I'm struggling with right now and make it a little easier for them to pour their soul out, get their frustration out on the keys, lay down a track, be proud of it, and start learning from that process on. Because from then on, unless you hit the store button, anything you do can be reversed. Okay? Anything. But don't hit that store button unless you're serious about keeping it. That's how you set your settings. Okay? You lock them in with the store button. It doesn't mean you go shopping at eBay and buy software. It's to store your performance, okay? So, key issue. Now, I'm gonna show you the Mox 8. I'm gonna lay down a beautiful track. I'm gonna show you how to record piece by piece. And you're gonna like it. It'll make it easy for you to get started with this beautiful machine. And you'll be glad that I did this for you. I'm glad that I finally figured it out. So. All this is about is me sharing my struggle and making your life a little bit easier. Yamaha was worth the effort. I'm glad I did it. I was almost going to trade it in, to be honest. But I said to myself, boy, what a coward. Why don't you grow a pair, old man? You know, I'm getting old. I'm almost 60, right? I'm farting around with, with all this new technology. I really don't understand. And the terminology is totally different than when you have a PSR. And I don't know, I don't read music, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, it just comes out of my brain. It's like I'm a sick individual and I just lay down my emotions through my fingers, you know. And I love Yamaha for letting me do that. Keeps me healthy, you know. Well, right. Anyway, I'm nuts as they come. So, here, let's get to it, all right. Yamaha Mox 8. Showing you how to record. You're going to like this. All right, here we go. Okay, as promised, here's my Mox. I love it. I almost traded it in because I was getting really frustrated with all these buttons, all these controls, all this what do I do, oh my God, oh, help me please, so... I finally laid it down. I figured it out. You can press all these buttons and not get yourself in too much trouble. Unless you press this one. This button is the store button. You see it? It says store. And after you make your settings in this screen, all right, do you understand? You can set it and lock it in, and then when you shut off the power, this will always return back for you. Okay? So now, 
Let's go and we'll turn on the machine. You'll get the Mox 8, right? And it'll start off on uh, the default. All right, so then what you want to do is come over right by the wheel here and you see it says song is lit up. Now I can choose my instrument right here. You see? And it's a concert grand piano. All right, and it's a beautiful sounding instrument. And that's the concert grand. You go to the wheel right next to the screen here and you can turn it and you'll get different instruments. Alright? So you already know that. You played with this a little bit. I'm sure you have. Alright? But recording is a different issue. Now, I know that there's another way to do this and it's a little more complicated. But, uh, I found a shortcut. I think it's a shortcut, but it's something that I couldn't find on YouTube to help me. So I'm going to come over here from this is where she'd start off. All right? And I'm going to press song. All right? I happen to have laid this one down. So what I suggest is that you pick number six so that you have a good clear space and if you notice these little black empty boxes under the numbers one two three four there's a little empty box until you assign a part to each one of those numbers it's just going to be a default piano okay and that's where this is set for number six blank. So now what I want to do is take this mixing button. You see this button right here? Right over from play. It says mixing. Alright, I'm going to press that. Now look at the screen. All of these tracks are instruments. And you see where it says piano right here, PN, piano, part two is PN, piano, piano, piano. And all of these slider bars are set at their default, about three quarters up. Okay? Now, to adjust those, you come over here, up, down, sideways, see? Up, down, and you press down. Now, highlighted is this slider bar right here. And I'm just going to move it up and down, see? With the wheel, with the jog wheel. Do you understand? I'm going to move it up and down. And that sets my volume. All right? If I push up this button, it highlights that upper wheel and with the jog wheel now controlling that, that's where I can pan, right or left. Do you understand? Now, everything is centered again. So what I'm going to do is now switch back to a song I already recorded and show it to you piece by piece. That's back at number... I'm going to exit first, which is a very nice button, because it lets you get out of the trouble you caused. Right here, exit, see? Exit, it brings me back to the default screen of recording track six, song six. So I'm gonna go all the way with the jog wheel to this song, Crazy. I'm just crazy, actually. Uh, appropriate. And if you notice, in these boxes right here, each part all the way up to number nine has been recorded. That's why those boxes are now black. Not like on an empty track, you see? There's an empty track. Mine are black. That means they've been recorded. The ones that haven't been recorded, if you notice, 
right here are empty. They're not black. They're checkered. All right. They're, they're broken lines. So that's a lot of tracks to record. And you got to be careful not to overload the machine, to be honest with you. Okay? And too much sometimes isn't good. Sometimes less is more. I learned that the hard way also while experimenting with this. So now I'm going to go press the mix button again. Right here next to the song. Mix. All right? And my thing changed now. This is the song that I recorded. You can see I have a piano, I have a keyboard, which is the synthesizer part. I have another piano and I have the drums. DR, see? Drums, brass, uh, I have an ARP, which is cool, synthesized ARP, and uh, all of these parts up to number nine with some brass, okay? And I've got them all at full volume right now, just, just, and some of them I don't. So you can control and record this as you set these settings to lock them in by hitting this store button, you see? And that'll lock that in forever until you dump it, all right? That's another story. But to start your recording, Pick your part by hitting the mixing button after you've chosen the song track. Like this is number one. Alright? And you just move over the jog wheel. Not the wheel, I'm sorry. These buttons, right to left. And what will happen is I press over, see? I come over to each piece that I want to record. Now, if I want piano, I choose piano. Down over here, it says voice. All right? That's one of these ARP buttons that controls that. So I'm going to check the voice. Actually, it's this button over here. Sorry. The bottom row. All right? See? Voice. Voice and volume. Voice, volume. Voice, volume. Okay. So, here we are. Now, it says Concert Grand. Now, I can change that by just hitting the jog wheel. And I can assign a different instrument to play. You see? Anything I want. An organ. Some, uh, bass guitar, okay? Anything I want to assign there. Now I'm going to put it back to its default. There, back to one piano, okay? One piano. There. Now, you play with these things, and you'll be able to assign different aspects of how you want to play and what bank you want to grab it from. All right? Bank. You see? Voice number. And then start writing these down, too, so you can save them. So anyway, as I said, I have nine parts recorded. All right? Nine black boxes, if you notice. Back over here. All right, on the, tells me what it is. So I use that slider and come back. Now, as I set the instrument on each piece, so I'm going to go over to number 11 because I know it's blank. Okay. Now, as I've gotten that part set, because all of these are already recorded, I will hit my record button. Okay, this is hard to coordinate, so excuse me, I, my first video uh, showing somebody something. So, that's lit up, record, all right? You set, set up, you see it says set up, all right, you're an overdub, you're going to record 
track 11. You see across the top there? Track 11 at 140 beats a minute starting at measure 1. Alright? Now, I want to come to these buttons. Edit. Channel set. Right here, F2. And... I'm going to see the voice that's going to play as a full concert grand by hitting that button. Alright, and ARP edit, I can control all the aspects of the ARP. The switch is on for the ARP, quantize is off. Now, I happen to have not used quantize, but it's a handy feature. We'll get into that more in another video. So I'm going back to common. I'm going to hit record again just to go back to my screen. Record the track, get ready. I'm going to hit Utility. There's a button here called Utility. Sorry it's so dark. Right here. That goes to the screen when I press it. And it tells me the volume of the instrument. All right? The chorus and reverb are on. If I go to the Sequencer button, which is F2 again. All right? Check the sequence. That's how I have my metronome set. Alright? And I have one measure to tick me off until I start playing. Now I'm going to go back to the record button. Alright? From here. Hit the record button again. And I'm going to start recording track 11. The rest of these tracks I laid down the exact same way with those instruments that you'll hear now. So here we go. And it'll start playing what I already recorded as soon as I hit this and four, me four beats count down.
the track is there. You see? Track 11 is now black. It's got a black box. Where track 10 doesn't because I didn't record there yet. Do you understand? So, play this back. Hit your measure back. Go back. You'll be able to hear what you played. Hit your mix button again. Your screen will change. It will show you the part you just recorded. Alright. And now, I can change that instrument while it's playing. the volume so just to let you hear wrong one I'm going to knock all the other ones down Each part disappears. And this is what I just did to show you. I'll go back. That's only part 11 playing right now, not 10. So each piece you can add. And I stopped it now. Just, but you can add each piece like I just did, you see? Now, bring all of those back up, see? And I'll get my full performance that I laid down piece by piece, track by track. Okay? And just an example. But the easy way to do this now is just to back out of this. I don't want to keep that track, all right? But I'm going to back out, all right? And I'm going to go back to my song. Now, if you notice, it wasn't saved because I did not hit store. Had I hit the store button, that track would still be there even though I left this screen, all right? It's locked in the memory. It's permanent performance. But I didn't want to overload my song. It already is, but I can't help myself. So I hope this helped you a little bit to lay down some tracks and start your recordings, okay? I'll get into assigning voices on my next video, but just check that out. I think it'll get you started, okay?
Here's how it's done, kids.